guys. I've been turned into a Rowlet. Ugh. I feel like every video needs to have some kind of introduction, even if it's not related to anything like that. Maybe it's just the, the writer in me that feels like you must have an introduction. Something that gets attention. I got nothing. Hello! Hi! Long time no see. The very long time no see. I see that my channel is doing well without me. Maybe I shouldn't come back. Hi, how's it going? Atratsu here, reporting to you live from the inside of my apartment, uh, in hopes that, uh, um, we will, society will continue to push on with these uncommon years which are very difficult and continuing to be difficult. Coronavirus. It's just crazy on how it hit and how it's changed everybody's lives. What's, do you know what's also crazy? Transition statement. I've been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons for the past month plus pretty much non-stop. And I finally hit a point in Animal Crossing where I'm gonna be switching over to kind of playing just a little bit every day rather than the huge chunks of time that I've spent playing Animal Crossing over the past month, April. So now that things have kind of settled down, and I hope to kind of play other games and kind of get back into the flow of making videos for my YouTube channel. We're going to do my thoughts on Animal Crossing, but I just want to tell you right now that the camera and the audio in the camera is all we have right now. We don't have anything else that's going to, I don't, I, my, my headset is broken. Uh, I've been communicating with uh, friends over Discord with my phone and a earbud microphone. Well, it's, uh, the, everyone's tired of it. It's really obnoxious. It's, I sound really quiet. Microphone is dead. I have no way of capturing switch footage, so I'm gonna use a good old fashioned little high schooler Timmy that has no capture software, takes a camera, holds it up to the TV, and records. If you can stand that kind of quality, and this kind of audio quality, then if you have any inkling to hear my opinion, my thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizons, stick around, bucko, because we're gonna be going through the whole what I have to say about it. Yeah, I would love to show you around my island, and if you can stand this, by all means, please stick around, and let's go on this island adventure together. Hello everyone, my name is Atratsu and welcome to my thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizons. So, uh, initial discovery that I made, I'm not able to show you what it looks like when you start a new world because uh, I think I need a new switch or something for that. New users just end up on the island. I ended up learning a new feature about my switch and you know that you can interact with other people on the same console if you have additional controllers. I mean, that's a cool feature to have there, but uh, um, one that I will not be doing because quarantined by myself and I only have one controller, so I uh, can't really take advantage of that. But here's the general gist of Animal Crossing New Horizons in a nutshell. For a new character, you end up on a desert island. Um, normally your island is split up you have normally a, a river that splits it, and you're only able to... Okay, getting Nook rewards, cool stuff. It's been so long since I've made a new character, I forgot what all the beginning stuff you have are. Um, you start out on an island, you have nothing, it's all undeveloped, there's not much stuff around, there are a couple of rivers that you can't get over, there are some cliffs that you can't get up, and you have a tent, you pitch your tent, and you kind of help out your villagers. You start out your island with two different villagers, and my first two villagers were Goose. Everyone's like, oh man, you're new. Welcome to Tolbarad. Thank you. It's good to be at Tolbarad. Goose, and who is the other one? Goose and Bianca wasn't. Oh, that's right, I can't remember who it was because she moved out. Uh, it was some gazelle lady. I don't remember who it was and who moved in for her. Must have been Bianca that replaced her. Anyway, um, you start out with two villagers and you decide where you want to set up your camp. So currently we have a tent in here. I don't know where I want to set up another character, so I'm not going to, but it'd be like, hey, what if I like this spot? Nope, too close to that. What if I wanted to put it here? 
Dang damn it. All right, how about if I pick up this and go right here? This is a terrible spot, but let's imagine it. I guess it doesn't look that bad. Oh, and we have to do landscaping? Ugh, no. You have to move the, the fire pit. I think not. Anyway, you would place down where your tent is going to be. I better place down this rock before I forget. You place down your tent where your tent would be, and then you run back to Tom Nook, and you're like, Hey, 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 I set down where my, where my tent is. And Tom Nook's like, Okay, maybe you can help the others. And then you go and you set down their tents as well, because you're in a dictatorship, and that's basically what the game is like. But it's fun, because then you can control where you want to place everybody, and then you place them all down. And that's really about the first day. And it incrementally unlocks things. That's one of the things that people have a problem with Animal Crossing. But before we jump into it, assuming that nobody has had any experience with Animal Crossing, the short explanation that I give for Animal Crossing is that Animal Crossing is a game, I describe it as just like childlike happiness, um, just um, life simulator, relaxing, um, a game that you do better when you're not worrying about various objectives and goals that you need to go after. Now, I'm a goal and objective oriented person, that's why it's bothering me that I haven't redeemed these nook miles. Thank you. So that's why it bothers me that I haven't redeemed these nook miles, and that I also have little icons down here that are like, you haven't interacted with these yet. But. As somebody who is goal-oriented, I can confidently tell you that Animal Crossing is not about being goal-oriented necessarily. It's about an experience, relaxing, and enjoying just the life on the island, the town, the countryside, wherever Animal Crossing puts you. I would say that the point of Animal Crossing is to just be happy and to relax, and that's that's my my elevator speech for what's so great about Animal Crossing. Everything's cute, everything's happy. Um, Animal Crossing is just a joyful game and a joy to play. So, that's not to say that there aren't goals and objectives. You incrementally... No! I can't pick you up! Okay. Goodbye, Hermit Crab. Uh-oh. And you're gonna have to deal with the bird in the background, too, saying goodnight. It's not bedtime, though. So, uh, there are goals and objectives in Animal Crossing, and those are what I typically focus on and work towards. Wait a minute. I'm gonna have to leave that outside of my, t my home because I want to put that there. So, uh, there are goals and objectives, and there is a lot of stuff to do for those that are goal-objective-oriented, like myself. Much like how I've set up my island, and this is reserving a spot that I'm going to place something. I'm going to place a, uh, a, a house there later on. Um, I've, in the morning, I, do, I have a checklist of things that I do, that I go through. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But, like, I am goal-oriented, but that's not the point of Animal Crossing. The point of Animal Crossing is to just kind of relax, to, in, to waste time. Animal Crossing is a game that soaks up time. I've spent over 200 hours playing Animal Crossing. That's not to compete with uh, Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft or Minecraft. I can't shoot this balloon and it upsets me. Um, it's nothing compared to those other games, but um, you can expect that from Animal Crossing. And at a time during like a national lockdown, this game was a breath of fresh air. That being said, I purchased the digital version of Animal Crossing because it was all sold out um, physically in the game stores around here. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at a digital copy right now. I don't know that there's much else for me to do running around here as this character. The point is, is when you start a new game, you get a tent, and then you have to make some tools. I don't even remember how you make the tools. I can show you how you get started though. If you ever need sticks, you just shake a tree, you get sticks, you run over here. I set a workbench up over here. 
If you ever need a workbench, there's one inside of the town hall, of the town hall tent. Wait, what? Oh, well, I can't do any do-it-yourself uh, uh, projects yet. So, yeah, you don't unlock that until later. So I guess there really isn't anything I can do with this right now unless I set up a tent. And if I was going to set up a tent, it would be probably somewhere to the southeast shore or northeast shore. Those are the underdeveloped areas that I have right now on my island that I need to work on. And I'm not going to do that. So we're just going to run over here, drop the message in the bottle, hope that it's a new recipe and switch over to another character. Uh-oh. Pear wall? Hmm. Alright. And let's... save and exit. The point of a new character was just to show that, you know, you don't have access to everything right away. On a new island especially, you don't have access to stuff. You have to have a limited amount of things you can do in one day. Then you can just run around and catch bugs and catch fish and all that. So there are things that you can continue doing after your daily objectives are done, which that much there is daily objectives. But let's switch. Switch users. Uh, no, why? The, is that the Y button? No, it's the Y button. Y and... Okay, well, here we go. Now to the real one, not the account that I made just a total of seconds ago. The one that accurately has kept track of how long I've played the game. The loading always seems to kind of take a little bit, but once it loads, it's normally pretty good. I haven't had any problems since. There we go. Welcome to Tolbarad. Kudos to anyone who gets the Tolbarad reference. Kudos being, like, anyone that played World of Warcraft, I suppose. Or is, you know, within inches of a keyboard and able to type in Tolbarad. Huzzah! Who put this here? Why am I getting called? It's because I made a new character. Hello, child's here. This is Tom Nook. Sorry for the sudden phone call, huh? This is an app I think you should know about. But then your phone right now. Leave it up, blah, blah, blah. Gee, thanks. An app that I will not use. Will be useful if somebody else shows up. Wonderful, I'll find a downloading, hmm? Now I sent you is call resident app. You can call blah 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 Alright, so, welcome to a character that has played uh, copious amounts of time playing this and, you know, assistance from friends and passing along DIY recipes, all that good stuff. So, trying to predict what the first basic questions somebody might have about my island are. Um, your island won't look like this. Um, I unlocked terraforming, terraformed my entire island. So it's no longer, it no longer has that organic streak to it. Everything has been placed, replaced, cleared, moved, changed. So nothing on my island is how it was originally. And you have no idea how much time and work that took to get there. Okay, so where to start? Um, Animal Crossing New Horizons has a crafting mechanic in it where you pick up recipes for example, the tools, and you gather resources to craft tools. You don't buy nets and fishing rods, you now craft them yourself. And you can upgrade them, you can upgrade your flimsy fishing rod with, you know, a flimsy f fishing rod and an iron nugget. And then you get a fishing rod with that has more durability to it. And you also have a couple different tools that don't break 
which would be the vaulting pole and the ladder. I have never had these break on me. These are the original tools that I had when I started the game, and they've never broken. These help you get to different areas, and it comes in handy when you haven't built bridges, because building bridges takes a lot of belts, a lot of work to be able to build a bridge, and a lot of build work to build an incline. So it's easier to just build these, to just build the tools. But later on, you'll want to build inclines and bridges for the aesthetic, if nothing else, but for ease of being able to move. Like, wow, look at that. That was so easy. It was so much faster than running up to the riverside and being like, oh. Hyo! 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 Once it's out, it's fine, but switching between it. It doesn't matter how fast you are, that's not nearly fast enough because you literally have to stop and switch, which is agony. You don't realize it, but it is. So, you won't get these tools though. You first get the vaulting pole and then you get the ladder later on after you get the recipe for it. You won't get those until later in the game. Yeah, it's really hard to talk about what you have to do first because it's been so long ago I've forgotten about it. First thing I had to set up a museum. Let's 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 go through some of these. Let's go all the way back here. Whoops. Don't need to look at those. <laughs> Welcome to my PowerPoint presentation web sh <laughs> showing my slideshow of various screenshots. This is what I was looking for. Um, one of the first things that you do is you, uh, uh, you bring some specimens to Tom Nook and he's like, ah, okay, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna uh, send these to Blathers and then Blathers is like, I'm gonna move here. And so then I had all these different resources that I was saving for Blathers when he finally showed up. And he said, this is what my brother visited me. <laughs> this is my brother showed me his phone case. This is us being goofy. This is me visiting my brother's island. Uh, this is me about to attack a villager, I think. Blather showed up, and then I gave him all his things, and then I had to save more items outside of his. And then I, they built the museum, and I still had to leave things on the outside of the museum. Then my other brother visited, and we became Scotsmen. And... Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's a story, that's another story, uh, I forgot I did that, um, <laughs> you can only wish that you were a fly on the wall during our play sessions, uh, I laughed so hard when this all took place, and then we put, uh, face paint on, and then I fished up one of these, and I caught one of these, and I don't know why I had that. There's that. That had to be upgraded. I don't have the picture of it. Oh, man. Okay. You get the idea. Thus endeth my slideshow. Please send all payments to my non-existent Patreon. Uh, www.trotsy.com Someday that'll be a website, maybe. I don't know. Alright. So, um, museum. Right. Museum is one of my favorite things in this game. You gather, uh, you catch fish and insects, and you bring it to Blathers, and you're like, here, look at this. And he's like, whoa, that's cool. I'll take care of that. And then, you know, museums happen. So you have a fish exhibit, you have a place for fossils, and then you have a place for bu insects. Butterflies. God, the, the, the beetles. Uh, uh, ves vespins, isopods, uh, crustaceans, yeah, you get the idea. So, that's one of the minor things, and again, goal-oriented stuff, when you're trying to, um, if you're goal-oriented, completing your museum is one of the projects that you go for, and one of the things that helps is your critter critterpedia, I don't have an example where it's not. I'm just going to reach over here and point. Do you see right here this icon? 
that one, the owl, that is an indicator that you have donated that to the museum. So if you ever are confused about what you have or have not donated to the museum, you go through that. And different insects and fish are available at different seasons. For example, you won't see any spiders anymore because they're not available in May, June, July, August, September, and October. And then they come back in November, which is kind of a pity. The tarantulas were really cute, but instead we've got scorpions, which are the alternating one. So we might run into a scorpion while running around. And by run into, I mean either run away or capture, because those are really the only two options. And the idea is to capture for sure. All right. So your first few days is going to be all about um, setting down your tents. And then you're going to start the competition of paying back your um, house loan. Your, your first payment is going to be with Nook Plus Miles, and then you have to pay with Bells. So then you have to earn Bells. Earning Bells is a pain. There are many different ways of doing it. You earn it by shaking down fruit trees. You earn them by selling furniture and crafting and selling things that you craft. One of the best ways is to go to the Nook store and see what the hot item of the day is and then to craft the hot item of the day and sell those. That's one of the best ways, but some, like, it, it, the hot item of the day is sold at double its value. So some hot items of the days are better than others. So Wave Breaker and Mountain Standy. I think the Wave Breaker is worth more, but it can be a matter of, like, what you have more furniture of. So, or more materials for. For example, Wave breaker, wave breaker. I went the wrong way. Here it is, wave breaker. That's 10 stone, 10 clay. I have a lot of clay. Some stone, not nearly as much. I've got more clay. I'd like to get rid of the clay more than the stone. And then the other one is the mountain standee, which is for wood and five softwood. I've already used a lot of wood and softwood though, so this is actually not the, my go to. So if I'm doing, if I'm selling hot end of the day, I'd rather sell the wave breaker. And then you just craft up a bunch of those and you go from there and that's one way to make a lot of bells. The traditional ways in Animal Crossing is gathering and selling fruit and getting fruit of a different kind. You're not going to see it here, but this is my orchard. So each row is a different fruit. I have gathered all the different fruit and I have planted them all the way across. When it comes time for harvesting, I just run through, shake, 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 shake all the trees and go through and pick them up and then put them in my house or sell them. By the way, this is my house. Do you like it? It is my favorite thing that I have made on my island, is this this, this arrangement of my house. It, it I'm... I have a condition of just never being uh, content, happy, and satisfied with what I have and always needing to strive for more, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm difficult to please. Let's have a look. In my house, though, when you, start with you, when you start with the house, the first thing that you get is just the main room, which is actually small. It's the first room is your tent, and it's smaller than this. Uh, never mind the mess. I am in the business of turnips right now. So, uh, don't worry about it. I'm trying to... Actually, I should sell some of these. You don't worry about turnips until Sunday when a lady comes along who buys turnips. I... Okay, good. I'll gamble with those. But these many turnips I must at least sell before the store closes because the value of turnips was really good. All right, let's go back here. Sorry, we'll keep talking about the house, but I'm gonna continue to do my goal-oriented things of the selling turnips to the store. So you start out with just one room, and then you go to Tom Nook, and you, do, you pay him back the Nook miles, and he's like, yes, yes, quite good. And he's like, how about a bigger house? And you're like, sure, why not? And he's like, here, take this loan. And you're like, wait, hold on a second, loan? Yeah, not the best price for turnips, but better than the price that I got them at, so it's not really, uh, 
It's not really a loss. This is a good sale for me. But I'm also not a gambling man. Boom. I will take that. So at the very least, I've at least made back mostly what I got off of the turnips when I first sold them. So I call that a success. Again, I'm not a gambling man. Turnips are basically like stocks for beginners, you know. The price changes every day and changes throughout the day. So you just keep on going back to the shop and the vigilant are rewarded. I was meaning not to go inside of here in case anyone didn't know about Isabella coming to the island, but sorry. Deposit. Don't look at how much money I have. Also, the uh, um, interest that you would get each month was nerfed after the first month. I think that people just farmed up way too many bells and Animal Crossing was like, nope, you can't be doing that anymore. So they dropped the interest rate, I think. You still get interest by having bells in your bank account, so it's worth keeping them in there. Also, you can only carry a certain amount. I'm gonna just put this over here. You can only carry a certain amount in your wallet. If you go over 100k, then it spills over into your inventory, so it's important to stay under that. Or for me, it is anyway. Let's get back to the house, though. So you expand the house, and then you get a loan. And then after you get that loan, you pay it off, and then he's like, "Oh, how about you know another room?" And then he builds the room to the north here. And that one is pretty expensive, but not the most expensive. I don't remember what the number is for it. And so then he's like, oh, yes, yes. And then you pay that one off. And he's like, oh, yes, yes, that's great. Um, what about we make another room? And you're like, another room? And so with each expansion that you have on your space, you're actually increasing how much, um, how much storage you have here in your house. So if you look down here, the bottom left corner right there. That number is 1,600. You're welcome. The, the more you know, do 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 do. Um, that number increases as your house gets bigger. So there is reason to expand your house and then store as much as you can in your storage because, you know, it just keeps more stuff inside of here. Then you build the wing, and he's like, oh, yes, yes. And the wing is the first time that the outside of your house changes, because it look, it changes a little bit depending on what you do. I forgot this is what I had in this wing. I had a bunch of, a bunch of weightlifting equipment, and I wanted everyone in the stands to be cheering for me as I ran around the track here. Yeah, woo, yeah! Animated backgrounds are my favorite. You get those from Sahara, I think? Camel person that walks around. Yes, yes, sells you this. Oh, and then this was, this was the Easter event. Ooh, they forgot about this. Ooh. You also can, oop, that's not it. You can also turn on and off lights. Good old D-pad. You can rearrange stuff. I'm not going to go through this, how to play The Sims of the game, but you get the idea. You can interact with some items, like lights, turning them on and off. What does this do? Ah. Weeble wobble. Then you can lay down on beds, I think. Is, am I on the right angle? Good. You can even close window shades, so no one can see the shame. And then after you build that wing, Tom Nook really shakes you down for the money because he's like, how about you make an upstairs or a downstairs? And you're like, I don't know, Tom Nook, you have a lot of my money. And he's like, no, 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 do it. So you build an upstairs or a downstairs, and then that's the max, like the largest chunk of money that he takes from you. Huh, who put all these insects up here? Hmm, I wonder what happened. Oh, well. And then, um, uh, by the way, uh, your, <laughs> your attic, uh, your second floor need not be filled with insects. It doesn't come that way. However, 
your basement being full of fish, that's definitely what happens, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is my uh, not kidding with you voice. Definitely true and honest, trustworthy Atratsu over here. Yes, sirree, bobber face. Um, oh wow, is it actually lagging? I might have so many fish in here that it's actually lagging my switch a tiny bit. All right, let's leave this. Well, switch plus having a sand floor, yeah, it a little bit heavy on the switch there and that. And this is far more what a standard a standard room would look like. And I've got my own custom my own custom things on the walls in some places. That's my steam. That's my steam. Actually, what am I showing you there? I can show you here. It, good night, Toby. Um, it's my Tratsu head and uh, my Steam profile, and I got a Warcraft one and a Mandalorian logo. And I d downloaded that one from somebody on. I, I found it on like a the Mabel Sisters store, clothing store, and I was like, all right. Um, added that one, and then that's my brother. <laughs> with Pidgey on his shoulder, my favorite picture, and then, I don't know, I was just like, I want Knuckles. Haven't done anything with those, really. Wow. The Obi-Wan outfit actually works pretty dang well. But now I want to go back to my knight's outfit. Alright. So say, say you've gathered lots of clothes. This is another fun cosmetic in the game. See, you've gathered all these clothes, and you're like, Atratsu, I've got all these clothes in here. What am I supposed to do with all these? How do I make a really cool outfit? And I'm like, don't worry, my friend. You go up to a cabinet, a wardrobe of some sort. You open it up, and it goes, oh, what's this? Should I change? Let's get changed. So then I'm just like, ah, I want to have um, a samurai armor tap. Actually, this is the one I have the colors for. Uh, I don't have samurai pants yet, don't mind that. And I love this hat. And uh, I love this mustache, though it's, this is the one that I've, I look like right now because, you know, quarantine beard, that's how it goes. And I got these, yes! Samurai greaves. And then, I mean, you could have a basket on the back, or you could have that one. A studded one looks kind of nice, but I think I have the wrong type of armor for that. So you could kind of do one of these. That kind of works. Yeah, the backpack's probably not the best look for it, but this is what I've seen most of the time when I've been running around. And then to craft, of course, you have to be at these stations. You only start out with a few recipes, but then you get additional recipes from your villagers, you get additional recipes from messages and bottles, as you saw me pick up earlier. You also get them, you can also buy them from the shop as well. So let's run back to the shop and have a look at the recipes that are available. Let's go! This is, you have no idea how much more of a familiar look this is to me, because I only recently got it, got the, all the things necessary for the night outfit. Here we go. So if you want to get recipes, or I guess they're DIYs, but I always forget that acronym for do it yourself, right? DIY? DIY? Dang it, I don't remember. Wait. Wait, I, I'm going to do it. Wait, I want to make sure I'm doing the right acronym. D C D I Y. Do it yourself, not D-Y-I. I don't know what a D-Y-I is. I have to go Google that. Anywho, that's why I don't say That's why I say recipe and crafting recipe. I, I cheat to get through life, man. So if you want to get recipes, you go here and you just pick these up. A nice thing to look for also, say I want Wildest Dreams, D-I-Y. And I'm just like, I want this one. It's a book. It's got a bunch of them. And it's like, oh wait, I do believe you purchased this already, Atratsu. Sometimes, for example, the flim Flimsy Act recipe. Pretty sure you have this recipe. But if you still want it, you can, bu you can buy it. So you can buy it and then send it to, like, another character. Which is one of the things that my younger brother did for me. He got me the recipe for the vaulting pole and the ladder early on. 
so he cheated and he felt like he was cheating. But was it really cheating? I don't think so. Because um, it really didn't change anything for the game. But, eh, you know, meh. That's all there is to it. So, let's talk about every one of the tools. So let's talk about each one of the tools. I have each one here. You have the vaulting pole, which then lets you get over bodies of water. There is a limit. Can I jump this? Might not seem like there's a limit, but there is. For example, I can't jump from this all the way over there, but from here, I can vault there. So there is a limit to what you can do with that. And oh, if you want to know what a villager looks like when they're work when they're when you can do a DIY. When you can get one from a villager, this is what they look like. You walk in and they're busy hammering away and you're like, hello. And they're like, oh, how's it going? Here, do you want to know how to make this item? I probably, it just hit me while I was on my run. Or maybe it was dehydration. Most of my villagers are really athletic, so they normally say that. You'll learn a lot of common phrases in Animal Crossing. You can just get used to it. Alright, next one, ladder. You already know what this is. You run up to the side of a wall and you scale it. Beautiful. Next, you have a watering can. This is necessary for watering flowers. I'm sure you are astonished to hear that. These sparkling. Oh, I watered those. How about these? How about these? Dang it, I've watered everything. Oh no, I didn't water everything. It was raining earlier today. Sorry, I am an idiot. So, sparkling means that they're watered, so it doesn't actually matter if I water them or not. But, just to illustrate... Ha! I have now watered this plant, this plant, and this plant. You originally have, like, a flimsy watering can, which only waters one when you upgrade it with the iron nugget. You then can water three. So that's what the watering can does. And watering plants means that when it's sparkly like that, it indicates that it's watered. Tomorrow, there is a chance that the flowers might breed, or they might spawn a duplicate of themselves, or they're cloning is what it's called. I'm not even going to get started with that. It's a long, arduous process of learning about how flowers work, and I'm not even going to touch it. Especially no one's going to learn about flower cloning from a guy who's recording with their get the their well what brand of camera is this again Nikon D3300 the slingshot is what you use to shoot down the balloons if we see a balloon i will let you know and i will shoot it down but i am no good to you unless i have a balloon to shoot down but yeah you gotta figure out where they are, you run right up to it, and you're like, Pew! and you shoot it down. I'm not gonna use this, because I don't want to chop my trees down, but you go up to a tree and you go, ha-cha, 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 three strikes with an axe, and you're out. Three strikes and the tree is felled, right? That's the word. You chop down a tree in three hits. With this shovel, you accomplish a couple different things. For one, you can dig holes, which, of course, I know that's earth-shattering. For another, dang it, for another, for those of you that don't know, this is the best way to smack rocks. I'd recommend a shovel, you go up here, and then you go, ha-cha! And then when you get pushed back, you get pushed back in between these two holes. Or you can, you know, dig another one behind there, and then you find this little corner here, and you just, you know. Uh, once a day, you can hit a rock eight times, and it spits out an item. It's a certain amount of time, so, I mean, if you're really, really dexterous, you might be able to do it without the holes. But why risk that? Why not just, you know, brace yourself? Next, we have a fishing rod. Easy enough to use. Fishing rod, you run up to a stream, you press the button, you cast a rod, and you wait. Only don't do this. You will never get anything. 
What you do in Animal Crossing when you're fishing is you carefully walk over towards... Hello, beach toilet. Uh, you carefully walk over towards a dark shadow. Ooh, that's a big one. I'm not going to risk running into it. I'll scare away another one, maybe. And then you try to angle it right there. Now, the fish... Shoot! Didn't give me any time to explain anything there. So what's happening here is you are casting, it's out, and you wait until the bobber goes under. Sometimes I just close my eyes and I use the force. And um, you wait until you hear the punk, and then you go whack, and you pull it back, and you try to get them in that way. If you pull it too soon, which is more often than not, you'll pull it too soon. You pull it too soon, the fish doesn't get caught because it never got hooked. If you pull it too late, they get off the hook. So here's another thing to beware. Oh, there's a balloon over there. Don't run around the fish. Otherwise, they will disappear. Let's see here. Where is it? Uh-oh. There it is. Okay. Here it comes. ha -cha! It almost fell in the water. It falls in the water, you lose it. Oh, and a Nooks Plus reward! Yes! As you can tell, I clearly need a lot of Nook, nook Miles. That's a lot of Nook Miles. And what did we get? Money? Aww. That's actually kind of cute. I'll hold on to that one. For winter time. Let's not talk about that though, we just got out of winter here. Alright, let's see if we can do the fishing again. Let's see if you can get a bit of a better example here. Ha -cha! Okay, quiet. Shoot! Sorry, I got jumpy. That's that's me. I get I get jumpy when I play when I play Animal Crossing, because I'm it, he teased me one too many times and I the Everyone was watching, and I wanted you all to be impressed with my fishing skills, and, and then I panicked, and, and I fell down, and I hurt my shin. Where? I want, come on, I want another fish. Here we go. So I'm doing it just kind of uncon- really? I'm doing it kind of unconsciously, but I can adjust the camera up and down, but outside you can adjust it to the right and the left. You have to kind of do that naturally. Dang it! This one? Yes. Yes! We caught a frog. So something also to keep in mind is that you catch different fish, or in this case amphibians, um, from ponds. This is a pond. You have open water here. You also have docks or piers. I've never seen a fish over here though. It's uh, the pier that, w that we were on earlier over in that direction. And you have rivers, which is like over here. So this will be a river fish that we will catch. Assuming I catch it. Don't. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the size of the fish also makes a difference. So, for example, if we go here, which you get to see these once you catch these, uh, you can see the location for these is rivers, uh, we are out of season, we can't catch these anymore, no wonder I haven't seen them. Um, they have a time of day that they're most active towards as well. I don't know if I can see any on that one. I don't know. I, like, I don't like that one. Let's use one that I know. The frog. Yes. So frogs are at, you can catch a frog at any time of day, as long as it's May, June, July, or August, and you only catch them in ponds. Also, you saw the size of the shadow. Uh, tadpoles are smaller, so they're very, very small fish in the pond. Let's see here. Oops, scared that fish away. 
No, nope, that'll probably be another frog. Yep, another frog. You can kind of get an idea of how big something is going to be or what kind of fish you're going to get depending on the shadows. The ones you really want to keep an eye out for is in the ocean, you want to look for really, really, really big ones. Now unfortunately, really big shadows normally means sea bass. Come on. Yes. Normally big shadows mean sea bass, but you have a chance at getting an oar fish, and if it's raining there's another rare fish that I cannot pronounce the name that you can also get. What I'm also doing here is getting redeeming Nook Plus Miles. You unlock this later on in the game. These are different objectives that you get additional Nook Miles for completing. And this is what keeps you going. You just keep on going. The last tool that we have to look at here is the net. And it's kind of late in the day. I don't know if I'm going to find any bugs. If I look carefully on the flowers, maybe we'll find a stink bug. There it is. Man face stink bug. So, target sighted. Armed. Step, step, ka -cha! We'll just forget that that ever happened. No need to ever bring that up to me. Alright, redemption. Target sighted. If I'd miss that again. God. That's how you catch bugs. That's really all there is to it. There are different types of bugs that you find in different situations, on different plants. You find them on stumps, you find them on tree faces. Like here, you'd be like, wacha. You sometimes find them in trees when you shake a tree. Sometimes you have like a spider that'll come down on a thread. Yeah, I think that kind of gives the basic idea for tools. What else? I guess, I don't know, if it's, is it worth even talking about each one of these apps? Cameras, literally to take selfies. That was for missing the stink bug. And Nook Plus Miles. I associate these with achievements, and like achievements, some people are going to like them, some people are not going to like them. Uh, I think that they're useful in that they help people learn what you can do in the game and at least reward you. For example, lost treasure, oops, shot a, shot a balloon and it uh, went splash in the ocean and they're like, here you go, you can have this anyway. and. Some of these are going to take longer than others. For example, uh, Active Island Resident, this is going to take some time to get, and there's, I don't skip time. Shame on those of you who do. Uh, skipping time, by the way, is when you switch your, uh, switches time, pun not intended, to jump ahead in time so you're able to do more during an actual literal day. Um, that's just a judgment call. I will judge you for that, but it doesn't actually matter, but I will judge you for that. Uh, yeah, nothing else really to say about the Nook Plus Miles. Critterpedia you've already seen, kind of, as you pick up, as you gather different critters, you then bring them to the museum, but even if you don't, you have a spot that then shows up here, which then you can consult whenever you want to find them. Oh yeah, sea bass is always in season. Thank goodness. Um, these are your recipes, tells you the resources that you need, if you have those in your inventory, which by the way, having them inside of your storage does not count, it has to be in your actual inventory to use it. Kind of an oversight. Nook shopping was unlocked later. This is just if you wanted to buy various items from the Nook shop. You normally access the PC in the town hall, but after you buy enough things, they're just like, hey, you should sure buy a lot of stuff from us, have one of these. Uh, Island Designer is the terraforming feature. Uh, terraforming lets you set elevations, water, and uh, make paths. Then custom designs, I used 
um, to get the custom designs I wanted, I used QR codes and the Nintendo Switch app to scan QR codes to be able to scan and convert images into, uh, into uh, QR codes, which then I brought into the Switch. The map, which um, get used to using the map, it is a very good feature to have here. Um, these will let you know where your various things are. Does it, does it show where it read? It doesn't. It shows the icon that read is there at the top left of it, but it doesn't actually have anything for that. Uh, chat log. Whoop, we don't want to do anything with chat log. Uh, best friends. Don't want to do anything with that either. Call resident. It's people there. Passport. And that's just. I don't know. Uh, rescue. I haven't. I didn't. I haven't used most of these other ones. When it comes to chat log, I haven't used that. I haven't used the best friend feature that much either. Just adding best friends is so that they can adjust things on your island, like steal your flowers, I suppose. Um, yeah, no, I have kind of have it kind of control. I can't tell you too much. I haven't played with it that much. Uh, passport is again that's more of a customization. You can set up um, uh, titles, kind of aesthetic stuff. It's just kind of a neat little feature. Rescue service. I've never legitimately used it. I used it once just to see how it worked. I've never been trapped where I've been stuck and I needed rescue services, so I'm not actually sure why it's there. There are a few situations when it makes sense. There was a special event where you use it to reset a maze that you were in, but yeah. Not a big deal, really. But yeah, I think I've pretty much shown the island here. Yeah, I'm rather proud of what I have. I have statues from gathering various insects. I've got those all quarantined off. Haha, <laughs> not intended, but the irony. Um, having insects collected in various areas. Um, those insects and fish are collected because I want to make the trophies for them. Then I've got, you know, different areas. I've got a zen garden area. Just, you know, have a garden with pink tulips. The only blossom thing that I ended up getting here. Pump water. Can turn on and off lights. And I've been talking this entire time, but really the thing that uh, I like, one, one of the things that I like the most about Animal Crossing is the atmosphere. It's relaxing. Just an enjoyable experience. Oh, I didn't talk about the money tree. Every day you have a shiny little hole in the ground. Um, after you get a shovel, you dig that hole. Be sure to put 10... Uh, 10k bells, bury 10k bells into that hole. You can only bury it when you have a shovel out. Say that this was the hole, you go here, you dig it up, you get a thousand, and then you're like, I'm gonna bury that, and then it turns into a tree. Wow, look at that, I dug up those bells. So that's how you get uh, a tree, and then each one of these is a money tree. So up, up there, those are money trees that are growing, except for not that, that's golden roses. I got excited, I got those for the first time. They're still new. You gotta camp over there. I should just end the video right there. <clears throat> I really should just end the video right there. Um, so embarrassing. I'm better than that. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> there are meteor showers, there are holidays that take place, events that happen with that. Even once you have done <clears throat> everything, like my house has been completely paid off, um, I'm nearing the end of uh, the adjustments on my island. The final adjustments that I'm making are I'm moving these two houses. Oh, what do you have to say? Asking everybody, anyone anyway, interested in buying my dolly shirt? Uh, no. Yeah, ask Frank, leave me alone. 
Um, I'm moving Drift's house. This will be moved tomorrow to... Shoot, no, no. His house is being moved... Here. To this one. Right there. And then I'm going to move this house, which is uh, Frank, moving this house over here. And then I need to finish this bridge. And then I'm going to build two bridges here. I'm going to build an incline there. And then it's done. It'll be finished. I'll be, I'll, I won't be happy <laughs> with what I've done. But it's, it's finished by my book. And then I'm just going to log in daily, try to get recipes, check my fruit, and just kind of passively make passively make bells, save up, and then someday if I want to sink in another hundred hours and re-terraforming my island, I might reset everything and try to, try to do that again. But until that happens, I'm calling it good. And yeah, I think I've, I've pretty well exhausted the stuff to say, though not truly exhausted. There's a lot to explore. Most of the enjoyment in Animal Crossing is just relaxing, gathering things, gathering recipes, crafting recipes, um, gathering bells. My general advice is to hoard items until you know what they're used for. If you're like, what is this used for? Either hit the internet or just hold on to it until you find out later. Uh, one of the ways that you can keep playing without, you know, skipping ahead for those that are more slower paced, you get Nook Mile tickets from the Nook Plus rewards, then you run up to this, and then you're like, I want to go to a new island by itself. Always do that with, uh, you go, I want to fly, and then you want to use a Nook Miles ticket, and then you go to a random island, and you get to gather items, some, I, you have different themes in different Nook, um, in different, in different random islands. Some islands, you smack the rocks and they spit out money, some islands uh, are like Spider Island and Scorpion Island, which are the most rewarding because you can capture and, and then sell scorpions or spiders. That's the one that I'm always trying to go for now. Yeah. Animal Crossing, I think, appeals to the types of people that enjoy playing games like The Sims or like playing games like Minecraft or Terraria. It's the, the element of building and crafting and just kind of like setting up a little world the way that you want it to be set up. Um, that's always really appealed to me. Doesn't always appeal to everybody. Um, Again, this is really, I think, just the perfect game for people to have and to be playing during this unfortunate um, coronavirus that's been going around because it's, um, it's, it's everything that you miss about the outdoors. It's like, I can't go outside, but at least I can be inside and play Animal Crossing, which is a game that makes me... I'm going to catch you now. Yeah! Get caught, Hermit Crab! It just wanted to be left alone. Yeah. Oh, and flush the beach toilet for good luck. I almost forgot one more thing. So, one of the big objectives in Animal Crossing New Horizons is to get your island to a five-star rank and you have to get pretty far into the game to get it but you first need to get your island to three stars then KK Slider will come to your island and you'll see the credits and then you can whenever you want to count the game as being completed you can do that. You check your island status by sitting at Isabel's counter you have several different options of course you can change the tune and all that Let's talk about Island of Owls. And right now Tolbarad is five stars. So that was what I was going for, getting five stars. Um, but you only need to get three stars to be able to get the concert, which then, you know, considering the concert, and then you have the credits, 
it's easy to see that you could finish the game then, and that's when you unlock terraforming, so really the game opens up to you at that point. My brother considered the uh, concert the uh, end of the opening tutorial. I consider it the end of the game technically, but Animal Crossing never really ends. You will continue to uh, get furniture, um, have different events, holidays, and stuff like that. Animal Crossing is the gift that keeps on giving. It is slow-paced, and that's one of the things that people judge it for, um, because like it, it's, it's slowed down on purpose. It's supposed to be slow-paced. Um, that's why the Pocket Edition was really... Mm, I don't, I don't know what I want to say about the Pocket Edition. Um, it's, it was easy to add microtransactions into Pocket Edition. So it was easy to set that up to be like, oh, pay us a little bit of money and it'll go a little bit faster. In this, you don't even have microtransactions. It's an arbitrary wait time that takes place that you have to do. But again, for me, that's just part of Animal Crossing. And I'm fine with it. Some people aren't. Some people find it frustrating and annoying, and so they time skip. Um, I'm not one of those. I just play the game to relax, and I would be playing it the same way even if I didn't have as much time to play it. And I would get to this point, and I would do exactly what I am doing now, which is just checking in daily instead of playing it copious hours. Well, everybody, I don't know that I have much more to say. Thank you for watching. My name is Atratsu. And if you found this video entertaining, well, I mean, first off, you made it to this point in the video. Thank you so much for sticking it out through the entire video. And honestly, it's either people that are really wanting to see what is available in Animal Crossing New Horizons, if they're considering getting it, or you really wanted to see what my island looked like. And either way, I thank you for making it this far in the video. Always appreciate it to those that make it to the end. If you found this video useful or you found me entertaining, hopefully you find one of those. One of those hopefully is the case. Um, a subscription, subscribe would always help. Like, comment, all that good stuff. Um, it always helps videos more than you know. And as a you know smaller YouTuber, it's always appreciated as well. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Atratsu. Lloyd. 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 I look forward to your future support. Have a good day. See you in the next video.